Thank you so much. I mean, uh, just watching that video gets me excited again. So I still feel like I can do it uh, at times. So I might take uh, Tyree up on his challenge and actually get a one-on-one -on -one drill going. Um, uh, but first and foremost, I think uh, we should thank the people that put on the, this uh, incredible event. I mean, I know we've been doing a lot of applauding, but thank you, seriously, so that we can just enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Really grateful for that. So thank you. And. Um, Again, I'm incredibly grateful to uh, be able to be inducted with these other Hall of Famers tonight. Great group of guys. Again, uh, some guys that I've gotten to know in a couple of days, and uh, I feel very grateful for that. Um, so first and foremost, I'd like to thank my fiance, uh, Megan, and uh, my dad, Bill, for continually being my support system and helping me navigate life. Uh, I want to thank the coaches here uh, that helped make my football experience so rewarding. Um, my professors that challenged me to think differently, and uh, my teammates who inspired me daily. Um, it's really challenging for me to capture the sense of support I had as a student athlete and during my career with the Bucks, and um, my time since moving on from football. Uh, essentially, I wouldn't have had the career I had without the people and experience I've had at HWS. The kind of support and guidance I've received is really the motivation for me wanting to support others. Um, there are so many examples that capture the gravity and influence that HWS has had in my life. Um, I'll try and make it short and sweet for Brian Miller. I know I'm the last guy going, so I'll do, yeah, okay, thank you. Because uh, there's a lot I want to say. <laughs> um, so very few people know this, but actually uh, I wanted to quit <laughs> my freshman year at Hobart. <laughs> um, training camp was brutal. Uh, it was far and away the hardest thing I had ever done in my life physically. Uh, I, I came from a small high school. I was just better than my teammates. Practices and training really never seemed all that hard in comparison. And uh, Coach Craig uh, changed that when I stepped onto campus. Uh, he was relentless. Um, he loved making us work. And um, I think he thoroughly enjoyed watching us suffer. Um, that's for anyone who's played for him may know. Um, but because of that, I had a huge reservoir of experiences that made my NFL training camps, honestly, that much easier. Uh, I guess, I'm, I mean, I'll say that again. Like, my, my training camp at Hobart made the NFL training camps easy because Coach Craig made them that hard. So I'm just putting that into context, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's real, too. That's not me just, like, gassing them up. That's real. <laughs> Uh, so fortunately, though, at the time, I had teammates and seniors in that locker room who had, like, a level of commitment uh, that I immediately uh, gravitated towards. There were values that the Hobart culture had built into that team environment. And uh, fortunately, I didn't quit during training camp. Again, thank God. Uh, and though I rarely played my freshman year, uh, I had a benchmark for a certain standard of commitment and work ethic. Um, the senior left tackle that started ahead of me when I was a freshman, Anthony Coletta, he was a pretty ex great example of the Hobart ethos, I think, and um, he was exceptionally helpful for me, like giving me tricks to the trade, um, you know, helping me with scheme, help understand the new playbook, right? Um, but for me, the real power that's carried on with me is not really the specifics of technique and offensive line, that's interesting enough, but uh, it was really in the simply showing of support and the gift of guidance. That for me was massive and that's what I've taken on into my career is trying to help those younger players and guide them in the best way that I can. There really was a, a number, a reason why I picked number 74 when I started with the Bucks. Uh, the number represented the ethos that became so important to my success in my career. Uh, and that was Anthony Coletta's number and the, that's the number that he wore. So. Um, some of my teammates here tonight uh, had the same dedication and uh, built that Hobart football culture that we all love, grew and to love. Uh, we became the winningest class in Hobart's football history. And I tell people all the time, the guys I played with genuinely had Pro Bowl mentalities. Like these guys like, that I've played with, uh, physically they may not have been able to get to the next level, but no, I'm serious. Like, you, you, there, there were dogs in our locker room. Like there were guys that I really feel, uh, if had a different physical skill set, would have been terrific in the NFL. And then they're terrific in their respective careers, obviously. And that's so 
Um, it just shows the example of the kind of guys that really were in our culture, in our locker room, and the culture that we had. Um, Coach DeWall undoubtedly uh, had the biggest impact on me during my time here, and I could pick a hundred different examples of the way he had a positive influence on me. Um, but I can share one of the more unorthodox ways. Um, yeah. Uh, so some people here know this, but Alex Bell, the Hall of Fame offensive lineman, um, kind of paved the way for me in my tra trajectory to the NFL. Uh, Coach DeWall was around that time, and he was for, around for all the scouting visits, the interviews, and the workouts, the pre-draft workouts. Um, and uh, Coach DeWall had always said he learned a lot from that experience. Uh, he refined it when I was going through the draft process. Uh, but I'm not really sure where he learned this next uh, coaching trick, uh, but it worked. My junior year, uh, Tyree and I had uh, scouts come and have us run the 40, take the Wonderlic test, do their due diligence, get a couple of me measurements. Um, but they looked at thousands of draft prospects from every other school in the country. And up until that point, I never really run a, a 40 before. Uh, and uh, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but again, fortunately, there was Coach DeWall who took Tyree and I down to the field house, uh, work on our starts and our techniques. He even timed us to let us know how we were doing. I thought I was doing pretty well. And I had a point of reference. Most draft prospects ran well under a 5-1. Uh, and when Coach DeWall gave me my time, so I was running 5-3s, 5-4s, uh, and I thought I was done. Like, I'm, not only am I a D3 player, but I'm slower than every, every other draft prospect. I don't stand a chance. Um, well, when the scouts came into time, Tyree and I, uh, I ran like my, let's say, my butt was on fire. Uh, and I, well, I ran well under a 5-0. And it wasn't until I found out later that DeWall was intentionally giving me slower times uh, <laughs> to give me a little extra juice. So I'm grateful for that. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I th well, I think that story is great. Uh, it doesn't really capture the hours and mentoring and guidance that Coach Wall gave me. Uh, DeAndre and I would go to his office every week during the season on top of our normal film sessions and kind of rigorous schedules, practices, workouts, and he would teach us scheme and how to become better players, and more importantly, he would teach us how to become better men. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. Around the same time, uh, as the possibility of the NFL came on the horizon, I had several influential, influential professors and classes that helped me um, plant the seeds for my worldview uh, that I'm continually growing to this day. Two courses that stand out to me, I was told to telling the story earlier, but uh, Global Justice, Social Justice, these courses were uh, actually a foundational reason for me for choosing my next path uh, as an aspire, aspiring psychologist. It's not a very linear path, but I see the connection very clearly. Uh, during my time with the Bucks, I immediately got connected with organizations that helped me alleviate suffering, instill dignity, and promote self-sufficiency. And the question of how I could be of service and how could I invoke change in my community were really concepts that became foundational for me during uh, my football and now my next career. One major way to evoke change in people, I, I believe, is to have consistent, intimate conversations. That's how I've had uh, the biggest changes in my life, like the conversations I would have Dual, with Dual in his office. And as a clinician, I really hope to be able to give the support that allows people to become better versions of themselves and that they, in turn, can carry on to their communities. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so even after football, I've been helped by HWS. Uh, recently, I went through the process of uh, resume writing for grad schools. Uh, and it's safe to say that my uh, resume was a little heavy-handed with football, so it needed some tweaking. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. Um, but when I was doing the pro going through the process, my freshman year advisor was helping me through my uh, statement of purpose. Um, so he was there when I was a 17-year-old trying to grasp any bit of clarity I had for my professional interests, which at the time I, I had none. Um, and now here he was uh, for me at 30 years old, giving me the guidance as I navigate another period of my life of uncertainty and extreme transition. I'm so grateful for the HWS community. There are so many people in this room that have had an immense positive impact in my life. I hope to be able to provide the same support and guidance for people in my community that I receive from HWS. Thank you.